What's up, everybody? It's Soren Baker here on Unique Access. As always, please hit that subscribe button. It's right down there and it's free. That enables us to keep coming to y'all as often as possible with as many interviews as possible. So please hit that subscribe button, like our content, share, talk about it, be about it. Each one, teach one. We appreciate your support and getting us this far and help us go even further. We just launched our membership program. So if you haven't already, please hit us up there and support us that way. Now, today we have the honor and privilege of being joined by Dazzy D. Thank you for coming through, sir. Oh man, hey man, I'm so I'm so I'm so honored to be on this uh this situation you got here, man. You got a great you got a great outlet, brother. I appreciate it. No, likewise, it's an honor to have you. Been listening to you for years, and uh, we got a lot of exciting stuff to talk about. For those that don't know, Dazzy D just put out his baking soda project. So if you haven't gotten that yet, it's available worldwide all outlets, streaming platforms, et cetera. So please be sure to support that because one thing we need to do is support the artists we grew up listening to and loving as they keep uh, further in their careers and putting out new material. So yeah. as you did for Baking Soto itself, how and why did you decide that to be the title of this project? Well, shout out to West Coast Stone. Uh, he's, he produced the whole album, uh, me and him. I co-produced it, but he produced the whole project basically. Uh, it was funny how we was working, man, because we were like, we uh, we called making beats cooking. So like Stone to call me like first thing in the morning, man, 10, 11 o'clock, like, hey, man, I just cooked up some. I, you know what I'm saying? Oh, man, I'm going to go hit this and, and smoke this weed and I'm going to go cook. So I was like, OK, that's dope. So we said it so much. I was like, man, I'm, I, that's what I'm going to name the album. I'm going to name it Baking Soda. You know what I'm saying? Fair enough. And then on the song, uh, you have the intro which uh, people probably will enjoy. But then with the Baking Soda song itself, uh, one of the things I thought was amazing production-wise and sonically was that there's so many different things with the bells, the organs, the progressions, the different sounds. So for you as an artist, as a rapper, as a writer, when you're hearing all these different sonic elements coming into a song, how does that kind of affect you or uh, you know, kind of modify what you're saying or what you're going to be doing lyrically? Well, actually, the way we approached this, that song and really the whole album, uh, the way we approached it was Stone would, he called it the frame. He would make the, the frame, you know, said basically the basic beat. Uh, so I would have an idea, concept of how to write, how to flow to it. And then uh, once I did that and I laid my verses, then me and Stone would sit down and say, OK, let you know, this line right here was super dope. What can we add to bring out that line? Or, you know, that let's let's break down something right here when you say this, you do that. You know, like we almost we like we it's crazy. We approached it, man, like like a like a like it was full on production. Like we sat there and we gave everything thought to it, man. Everything has thought to this to to, to this project. Yeah. Well, one of the things I love about baking soda is the fact of bringing in all the the samples and kind of how music was made back in the 80s and early 90s where it would be like you were talking to the sample or the sample was reacting to what you were saying exactly and, and that's something that i've always loved so when i was listening exactly. to baking soda it really reminded me of that and even taking it all the way back to your old stuff which we'll get to in a minute will turn it loose and the stuff you were doing way back with sir jinx so mm -hmm. just reminded me of that too now uh, one thing that i always appreciate and i wish other people did more is like on the song baking soda you talk you reference ll and rocking the bells and different things and i wanted you to uh what was the significance of before the big west coast explosion in 87 88 ish 89 what was it like for you being in the west coast listening and loving the ll cool j's and you sample so many people will be talking about uh throughout baking soda but listening to them like how did that affect your shape and what you were doing i, I just loved hip-hop man i still do you know what i'm saying and i, I love how those songs are put together and i tried to bake that's how i tried to do baking soda i tried to put together an album where it, it's, it's more like nostalgia but it's still got you know it's still new but uh listening to like man like it's crazy because you know uh dre dre used to live with jinx and so you know when I used to go over Jinx house, it used to be me, him, and Dre, and we would just listen to these records, man. We would listen to Run DMC, we would listen to KRS One, we would listen to uh, LL, and me. And uh, it's funny because me and Dre used to fight 
other people over over the bad album and over the other album because me, me and Dre used to be like, man, Candy, Candy is dope. And everybody used to be like, nah, this one, this one. Then, nah, me and Dre was like, nah, Candy. So yeah, so you know, just 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 digging off them vibes, man. All them, all them greats, man. I feel good. good. You feel me? <laughs> yeah. Now when later's yeah. gonna drop jelly beans, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Candy's yeah. one of my one of the best songs ever made. Um, exactly. Phenomenal thing. Now, one of the other things that's uh, special to my heart with Baking Soda's course is that it floored me and honored me that you and KD had reached out to me to sample K and D in my inter- one of our interviews that we had on Unique Access. There's the link right there if you haven't seen it. But on uh, Daddy Daughter Day, man. From your perspective, what made Dazzy D like a, a good artist? Dazzy D was. He was already part of Lynch Mob. He was Lynch Mob because he was on tour with, with Cube on stage, everything. He was he was Lynch Mob. His whole style was different. And this dude, he's not a follower. He don't try to follow the trend. Makes his own lane. When you guys said you wanted to use that, I was mm-hmm. like honored. So what was it about what KD was saying during our interview that made you want to put that on Daddy Daughter Day? Well, first of all, I got to give you the shout out. I got to give you the prop because you set it up. You set it up with that question, brother. You know what I'm saying? So uh, when you asked him that question, man, Katie actually being a true homeboy that he is, he really, you know, he really broke down my outlook and my approach and my style on music. So it just, it just, it just, it just made sense to do it. You feel me? And Stone heard it, man. And Stone put that melodic, real like you know music i'm buttered to make it sound like real you know heartfelt man it's it's a dope it's a dope intro to a song man yeah well again i'm honored and everybody should definitely listen to daddy daughter day if you're a fan of unique access kd and yeah. dazzy d <laughs> yeah so. I think, hey, i'm thinking about making that the next single man um I, I i like it i think i think so far i'm getting feedback everybody's saying that that might be the one no that's that's a, it's a great song um but I also thought it was interesting too on Daddy Daughter Day how you were saying about you inspired the whole West Coast. So break down what you meant by that. Well, you know, I just like I hear a lot of stuff that me and Jinx and Drainum used to do back in the day. I hear it, you know what I'm saying, from 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 our peers. Um, and plus, I was just being a little cocky with it, you know what I'm saying? Like you know, because uh, when we did when we was working on this album, man, uh, the EP, whatever you want to call it. Um, Stone was like, man, you know what? He was like, I think you might shape the sound of LA with this one. You know what I'm saying? He was like, I really do. Cause you know, here's the thing about LA right now, man. Like we don't have a sound, you know what I'm saying? Like we're all over the place. Uh, you know, we got, you know, a lot of new up and coming artists that kind of sound like, you know, South cats or Chicago cats. And then, you know, we got a couple cats that, you know, uh, sound very uh, like, Boom Bappers, even though I love it, you know what I'm saying? But they, you know, it sound more like a East Coast vibe where we don't really have a sound no more. And uh, I think uh, I kind of fused the two, the Boom Bap, the hip hop with the West Coast. We call it uh, West Coast Boom Slap. Um, and, and Stone was like, yeah, I think you're going to reshape the sound with LA for this one. So that, that's why I'm getting a little cocky, like I'm inspired the whole West Coast. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And then what about, actually, is that your actual daughter that's on Daddy Daughter Day? Yeah, yeah, that's my, my my daughter. So what made you want to put her on there? Well, she's been on my records forever, man. We did a record uh, maybe about six, seven years ago called uh, Rep the West. Um, and she was on that. She was six. She was six when she did that. Um, and we shot the video when she was eight. So uh, then she's also on a record we got with my group called New Legend. Um, she's on that. And so it just made sense just to put her on this one. You know what I'm saying? And it's funny because when we was working on it, uh, I was like, you can cuss a little bit because she's 12. She just turned 13. She was 12. And she's like, I can. Got all excited. I said, yeah. I said, not a lot, though. But you can cuss a little bit. And she did. And she said, and she looked at me. I said, yeah, that's perfect. So, yeah. So we just rolled with it, man. I, it's, it's a dope record. Okay. Now, Rep the West, the B side of that was the type I like, which had West Side Stone produce that one. And I wanted yeah. to know, uh, at least for me, that was the first time I knew you guys had worked together. Was that the first time? Yeah, no, no, that was actually uh, maybe like 
No, we was about four or five songs in, a couple projects in before that one done. Actually, he didn't produce Rep and West. Uh, Mofat did. Mo I mean, Fat. the type I like. Didn't he produce? Oh, the type I like. Yeah, he did a type I like. Uh, that came. That was actually a spinoff of uh, uh, Give Them What They Want. Okay. So what makes you and West Coast Stone, you think, a good partnership? Dope. He's just dope, and he get it, and he's a real musical brother. Because, you know, I produce, too. You know, I've been producing damn near as long as I've been rapping. So uh, we just came together as two vets, man, two seasoned vets, and was like, you know, let, let's look at what the game is missing, and, and let's figure it out, and let's see what we can add, and let's see what we can do, and let's see what happens if we really bring some musical elements in and put it together with some real hip hop and, you know, playing some, you know, like a uh, um, conversation, you know, like we had a real, uh, you know, somebody play a violin, a violinist come and play on that record. You know what I'm saying? So to hear that went along with some scratching, like we just tried to go there, man. We tried to, you know, and me and Stone always challenge each other like that creatively. And I think, I think that's the perfect storm for us. Yeah, conversation is one of my favorites on baking soda. I thought DJ Sam Seven did a great job on there as well as uh, yes, that dude's a beast. Yeah, and I like the fact that you got the MC Ren samples, you got Karis One samples, you got EPMD, you got all these different things. Yeah. Um, and you also mentioned on there about being a Lynch Mob original. So uh taking it back on that side, when Lynch Mob was being formed, what do you remember about you know getting being officially a member, getting into the crew, how did all that happen for you? Well, with uh, well, well, the story with the lynch mob was, um, I was there the day Q decided he was going to leave NWA, um, and the day he decided, it was a phone call. It was a phone call with him and Chuck D, and they were sitting there, and you know, Q was a little nervous because although he wanted to lead the group, sorry about that, although he wanted to lead the group. Uh, priority was like, okay, you can lead a group, but you know, you got to give us some records, you know what I'm saying? You owe us some albums, so you got to figure it out. And uh, so he was a little worried about that. And uh, he called Chuck D and Chuck D was like, well, you know, since you can't have the best producer from the West, come mess with some of the best producer from the East. And that was his exact words. And uh, Q said, okay. Um, and then a few days later, I guess he sat on it and tried to figure out what the game plan was. He pulled up to my mom's house, man, and told me the game plan. He was like, look, uh, I'm, I'm going to join my own group call. I'm going to form my own group called the Lynch Mob. Uh, it's going to be you, Sir Jinx, Chili Chill, Yo-Yo, and KD. Those are the very original members when he first came across this game plan. Um, JD, Shorty, T-Bone, they came, I'm talking about like, you know, it wasn't a long time. You know what I'm saying? The, 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 the conception and bringing everything together was like a two, three week span. So, you know, uh, once we did that um, and then we started bringing, you know, JD and M because, you know, he was so dope at the time, brought JD and M in and we just kind of figured it out. Then JD brought in Shorty um, and we just started figuring it out. And, and it, it's, the rest is history, man. Hmm. Yeah. And speaking of JD, you got him on Baking Soda song 30 years later. So yeah. uh, what, you know, when you realize you've known people so long, but then you're still doing music with them, what does that, what does that mean to you? Well, actually that was JD's idea. That was JD's concept. Shout out to JD. Um, we was on the phone one day talking and I guess uh, somebody had asked him about, we had did an old freestyle a video it's on youtube and uh me him and mc8 and we did this old freestyle and jd was talking about it. he was like man it's crazy he was like man that was 30 years ago and i was like yeah he was like you know what we should do a song called 30 years later you know what i'm saying and i was like let's get it you know what i'm saying and we started messing around i came up with the uh the, the drum loop idea and, and, and the samples and we just we, we went in and cooked man okay and uh, 30 years later is also interesting to me because over the years, like the, your sound, your voice, your style has changed and evolved a lot. Mm -hmm. and, and that's very evident on baking soda and people that have followed your material the whole time will know what I'm talking about. But what has been that kind of evolution for how you present yourself vocally? I just, I, I listen to, I listen to a lot of hip hop, man. I listen to a lot of hip hop. Um, even though, you know, I got, I got that kind of, you know, nasally soft, 
uh, tone to my voice, it was even lighter and softer when I was younger. Um, and, you know, sometimes some people was like, ah, the lyrics is dope, but the voice, ah. So I kind of, you know, got older. And I don't know if the testosterone kicked in a little bit more or something, you know what I'm saying? But I, uh, I, I figured it out, man. And with this project, I said, you know what? Okay, I got to keep my same style. So if somebody hear me, they'll definitely say, okay, that's that's D. But uh, I just I just tried to round it off, you know what I'm saying? The sonically, stone sound is so big. I had to match that, you know what I'm saying, or else my, uh, or or else my voice would have just got engulfed, you know what I'm saying. So yeah. In the beginning, hip hop was ruled by the East Coast. Then the West Coast rose to prominence thanks to gangster rap. Right hip hop changed the world. Gangster rap changed the narrative. I'm representing for the gangsters all across the world. And then changed the world again. Cause I'll come and take your life away. The history of gangster rap features unheard stories, unseen photos and documents, all with exclusive interviews from the founders and players who shape gangster rap. I think a real gangster rapper has to scare you a little bit. The history of gangster rap written by veteran rap journalist Soren Baker. In stores now. Yo, what up? This is DJ Quick. Be sure to pick up my homeboy Soren Baker's book, The History of Gangster Rap, if you really want to know what we do.